do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. We got a great two-part video tutorial series, and this is part one of how to use PopStarter with the internal hard drive of a fat PS2 using free McGoot, for example, and playing your PS1 games full emulation off the internal hard drive, and it's awesome. So in part one today, I'm gonna show you real briefly where you can get all the different files necessary and how to rip your PS1 games and how to convert them. And then also how to set up your PS2 hard drive and put all the files on there and create the necessary partitions. And then in part two, we're gonna go into more detail on how to transfer your PS1 games to your fat PS2 hard drive, the fastest and the best method. Yeah, you could do it through USB or you could do it through FTP, but they're sort of slow. And the USB method is by far the best method. So we'll talk about that in more detail in part two. So let's get started with part one. It's gonna be an awesome tutorial, let's do this. If you go to the more info section, I have a link to this excellent forum website. Basically, it's a nice forum that has different text links on where you can get the files and also the tutorials. So if you go to downloads here, and I have this in the more info section, you go to downloads. What I want you to do is download the latest stable version and download the latest beta version. They're gonna be zip files and just download it somewhere on your computer. I put mine on my desktop, for example. And then at the same time, uh, later in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to rip your PS1 game into a binq format. I like to use Image Burn. If you wanna use a different program of your choice, by all means, go for it. But if you don't know how to get Image Burn, go to imageburn.com, go to the download over here, and then go to Mirror 7, which is provided by Image Burn. And that's, that way, you can make sure you get the actual program. Some gamers have told me in the past that they somehow downloaded like a spyware or the wrong program. So that's how you do it, or that, at least that's how I do it, excuse me. So once you got Image Burn downloaded, go ahead, install it, and you're good to go. Now, if you go back to the main forum website, if you click on internal HDD installation tutorial, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And before I go into too much detail, you also need to get these two decrypted files called pops.elf and iolprp252.img. Use Google and find those. I can't give you links directly, but if you use the search engine, you can find those. If you need help, let me know and maybe we'll come up with some other uh, plan here. And then there's a real nice tutorial on the rest of this here. So we're gonna be talking about how to install the emulator here, installing the PS1 games, which will be uh, the converting part, installing PopStarter, and then in part two, I'll show you how to transfer your games to the internal hard drive the fastest way. And if you're curious, here's what that new file structure is gonna look like pretty soon here. Okay, so let's get down to it. So what I have here is I have the pops. I created a folder called pops, and you want to do this to make it easier when you copy to your USB thumb drive later on. We'll talk about that. So pops, and then here's the two files I found from Google basically. So you have those two decrypted files. Here is the PFS shell. We'll talk about this in part two, so don't worry about it for part one. And then we also downloaded that R13 work in progress 05 and the 06. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, right click both of those zip files and just say extract here. So they're extracted. Okay, next thing what we wanna do is let's go ahead and let's start ripping your PS1 game. So I'm gonna go ahead and start image burn. Okay, you can use whatever program you want, but if you wanna follow along, go ahead, use Image Burn. It's free, freeware program, it's awesome. Never had any issues. And it does work on Windows 10, 64-bit, if you guys are curious. So I'm gonna do create image file from disk. I already put a disk in my Blu-ray drive. It's scanning. Um, it's gonna default, hopefully, to a .bin file. I'm gonna read it at max speed. And I'm gonna click on this button here. Actually, let me click on this folder icon and navigate to my desktop. Um, desktop here and then save it here and then click on this big read icon and let it rip. So that's going to take a couple minutes. Um, while that's in progress, let me talk about um, how to set up your USB thumb drive. So insert a USB thumb drive, make sure it's FAT32. If you forgot how to do that, insert your thumb drive, right click it, go to format, um, give it a name here and just make sure it says FAT32, click and start and you're good to go. Okay, so here's my USB thumb drive. It's all empty, right? So if I go into my pop starter files here, and let me just set this up. So make sure you copy the pops folder. So we're gonna send that to my USB thumb drive. And it might give you something about, are you sure you wanna copy this file without properties? Say yes, and then say yes for the second um, file as well. 
And then also what you want to do is inside the work in progress 06 folder, there's something called a pop starter that elf. So we're going to need that. Um, let me just send it to my USB thumb drive now and I'll show you how to rename it later on. So let's send it to my USB thumb drive. So that's from the beta zip file. And then also if we go to the work in progress 05, go to miscellaneous stuff. There's going to be this ULE KHN 2015 0602. So what you want to do is go in there and then right click the boot.elf and send it to the USB thumb drive. And then uh, hold on a second. I want to make sure that didn't burn my ears with that sound there. So my game just successfully ripped itself. Great. We'll talk about that in a second here. And then like I said with the boot.elf. Make sure that you copy that to USB thumb drive. I think I did that already. Here it is. Basically, this is the quote unquote pop starter edition. It allows you to format your hard drive, but also create the special hidden partitions that we need properly for pop starter um, usage. So we'll talk about that later in this video tutorial. Okay, so uh, we'll go back to the USB thumb drive a little bit later in this video. We have the brand uh, two new files we just got, the Q file and the bin file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to cut, and then I'm just going to go into my 05 folder, go to miscellaneous stuff, go into the toolbox, and just paste these here, okay? And then what you want to do is take the cool borders or whatever your game name is, the, the Q file, you know it's a Q file because it's only one kilobyte, take that, left click, and drag it onto the Q2 pops, and we'll see that it has created this .vcd file. We'll talk about that in part two of the video where I'll show you how to transfer it properly to your internal hard drive of the PS2. So what you want to do now is remember how on the USB thumb drive, let me bring that up real quick here. We have this popstarter.elf. What we need to do is rename this popstarter.elf so it matches your name of the VCD. The easiest way to do that and not screw it up is select your VCD, press F2, control C, copy, click on popstarter.elf, press F2, control V, paste it, and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. So part two, we'll talk about the VCD file, but on your USB thumb drive, what you need is, as a recap, your pops folder, pops folder with these two files here, and then boot.elf, which is the um, pop starter edition, basically. And then we also have name of your game. In my case, is coolborders.elf. And that's pretty much it for the, from the USB thumb drive uh, route. And then in this next portion of the video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to format your PS2 hard drive. It's optional, but I'm going to start from a clean slate. If you have stuff on your PS2 hard drive already, maybe you don't need to format it. But I'll definitely show you how to create the POPS partition um, for storing your games that we'll use in part two. And also, just so you guys are aware, if you go back to your 05 folder here, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Go back. Documentation. Go to installation. There's a nice text tutorial here talking about how to do stuff for an internal hard drive um, in letter A, letter B, and letter C as well. And also here, if you're curious, here's the, what the file path structure is going to look like. So anyways, we're all good to go on the computer side for now. So let's go ahead and go to the second portion of this video tutorial and show you how to do stuff on the PS2 internal hard drive. It's going to be awesome. Let's do this. Okay, so in this next portion of the video tutorial, we're going to talk about the FAT PS2 with the USB thumb drive and install pop starter onto the internal hard drive. So here's my FAT PS2 there, thumb drive plugged in, Freemig boot plugged in, and we're ready to rock and roll. So once you have loaded Freemig boot, what you want to do is go to your ULaunch ELF, and you'll notice that my ULaunch ELF, I have already pre installed the pop starter edition of that ULaunch ELF program. So let me show you how to replace your boot.elf so that becomes your new standard, which will probably become useful as time goes on. So if I navigate, press circle, go down to mass, press circle, and then what I'm going to do is go down to boot.elf, press R1, and then press circle on copy. After that, go back to your parent directory, and then go into your MC0, and go to your boot, press R1, and then paste it right here, press circle and paste, and then you are going to overwrite it. So we'll wait for that to be done. Okay, we're good. So now what we want to do is, if you want the changes to take effect, you can restart your PS2. So I'm going to shut it down, turn it back on. 
And then let's go ahead, go back to you launch elf. If you're curious on how I just skipped Freenic boot screen and went straight to you launch elf, I actually held down R1 and turned on the PS2 and wait for it until it loaded, then I released the R1. So that's like a pre-map shortcut if you guys are curious. Okay, so we know that this is the Pop Starter hard drive, U Launch Elf Edition. You know it works because it says version 4.42E HDD KHN. Great. So let's go to miscellaneous down here. Go to HDDD Manager. And you'll see how my hard drive is initially set up. Now, I'm going to format my hard drive. You don't have to do yours unless yours is already formatted or you have stuff on there. You don't want to delete your existing content. But let's assume that you're starting from a fresh start. So I'm going to go ahead and format my hard drive. Like I said, purely optional. If your hard drive is already formatted from before, then you're good to go. So I'm going to press R1, Format, Circle. It says Format Entire Hard Drive. Destroys all petitions. I'm going to press Circle to say OK. And now it's going to delete and redo everything. From this screen, once it has completed, I'll show you how to create a new partition where we're going to store games in the part two video. So at this point in time, I'm using a 250 gigabyte hard drive. So I have about 235 gigabytes free approximately. So let's create a new partition. I'm going to press R1 and then press circle on create. Now we got to give it a name. So this is important. Don't skip this step. It's going to be underscore, underscore period, and then pops, P-O-P-S, and then OK. And then we're going to press um, R2, and we're going to jump in 10 gig increments. I want to make the maximum 128 gigabytes and press OK with circle, and we're good to go. If you have a large hard drive that's larger than 128 gigabytes, you can create additional partitions. So let me show you how that works. Um... I'm not really sure why it says dot pops one, but dot pops one is a valid configuration. You can go from dot pops zero all the way to dot pops nine. I'm gonna just for kicks, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this guy. So let's go ahead and let's see here. Press R1, and then I'm gonna press uh, X to delete it, and then let's say OK, and let's see if it takes it. OK, maybe not. OK, whatever. So. I'm going to go ahead and create the next partition. So let's go ahead and let's go down here. We're going to call it underscore, underscore, dot, P-O-P-S, and then let's call it zero. I'm going to maximize the partition size, create a new partition, and say OK. So maybe this... You launch Elf is smart enough to rename the partitions uh, in sequential order. I'm not really sure, but uh, you take a look at the wiki or, or the website, the forum, you know, dot pops, and then dot pops zero through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all valid configurations. And just for kicks, let me see if I can rename this to dot pops. Will it take it? Just for kicks here, let's see. We'll learn together. Press X. And will it take it? Okay. It took it for some reason. All right, so that's fine. So next step, what we want to do is we're going to press uh, triangle, go to exit. We're going to go file browser. And then we're going to go to your mass drive. Remember earlier in the video tutorial, I made a pops folder. Inside the pops folder, we have the two decrypted files. So what I want to do is go back, um, highlight the pops folder, press R1 and say copy. Now we're going to go back to the hard drive. And then we're going to go to the underscore, underscore common. This is a partition. And then R1, and then paste it. So now it's pasting the folder with the two decrypted files. So we wait for that to be finished. Okay, great. Now what's next is, remember how we have your elf file? We took the pop starter that elf renamed it as the name of your game in question. So we go to my mass drive. I have this cool borders.elf. That's the example game. So I'm going to press R1, copy, and then I'm going to go back to the hard drive. You can paste it wherever you want, but just to follow the website tutorial and make things consistent, I'm going to go to the sysconf uh, partition. I'm going to make a new folder just to keep things organized. And just for kicks, we'll just call it FMCB, just to follow along 
with the website tutorial. And then you go inside here, R1, paste it, and there's your cool borders at ELF. So then what you want to do in the future is part two, I'll show you how to transfer your VCD game files to the PS2 hard drive the fastest way using the USB method from the computer. And then what you want to do is basically using ULaunch ELF, you can navigate into here, run your uh, .elf program, and then it'll start your game. In a later, maybe a different video tutorial in the future, I'll show you how you can streamline this process and make it a little bit easier on yourself using Open PS2 Loader or OPL to launch the games from within that program. But that's going to be a totally different uh, tutorial because that's more detailed than we can cover in today's tutorial. So that's pretty much it. In a nutshell, we formatted the hard drive. We added the additional pops partitions. We also added um, the ELF files for the games in question. And then in the common partition, make sure you copy over the POPs folder or create a new folder called POPs and then copy over the two decrypted files and you're good to go. So that's today's video tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.